Hi, I'm Eric. I'm an engineer on the Dart and Flutter teams. And I'm Ander, and I'm a product manager on the Flutter team. Large language models, or LLMs, are sophisticated artificial intelligence systems trained on large sets of data. And generative AI is powered by LLMs. These are artificial intelligence models that can create new content, such as text, images, code, or even music. Generative AI has the potential to transform how we create and interact with applications. As a developer, you've probably seen and heard news about how quickly generative AI is becoming a tool you could use to build software. New AI products for developers are being released all the time, and those products are changing and improving fast. It can be hard to know what the right tools are and how to get started with them. It's even hard to know what the practical applications of AI might be as an app developer. We didn't have much experience building apps that use AI before preparing for this talk, but using tools like the Google AI SDK for Dart, we were able to get up and running and build an app that uses Gemini API in no time. In this talk, we're going to walk you through our journey of building a cooking app that uses generative AI as the backend. First, We'll talk about how we got started with generative AI using Google AI Studio. Then, I'll walk you through how you can get the most out of the Gemini API through a process called prompt design. Finally, I'll show you how I use the Gemini API to enhance a real-world application. When we started this project, we didn't really know what was possible when it came to generative AI. So our first step was to learn and experiment in Google AI Studio. Google AI Studio is a browser-based IDE for prototyping with Google's generative models. It's useful for experimenting with different prompts as you build a feature that uses the Gemini API. While experimenting in Google AI Studio, we started to realize how many problems we could solve by building Flutter apps that use generative AI, such as building a smart chatbot for users to have a natural conversation about a topic, or using an image to inspire a user to make something. And I'm a big fan of the cooking apps that tell me what recipes I can make based on the ingredients I already have on hand. But these types of apps can be cumbersome to use. It's time consuming to use apps that require the user to manually type all the food items in their pantry every time they want to find a new recipe. And these apps can be difficult to build because they have the cold start problem. They rely on having a large database of recipes to be useful. But with generative AI, both of those problems go away. Using our new app, the user can just take a photo of some ingredients they want to use, and the app generates a recipe using that photo, which means there's no need to type each of the ingredients, and there's no need for a pre-existing database. We needed to do a proof of concept to make sure that the Gemini models are capable of taking an image of ingredients and returning a recipe that is both reasonable to make and delicious. This required a process of trial and error called prompt design. Prompt design is the process of creating and tweaking prompts given to a large language model to get the desired type and quality of output. The first decision I had to make is what type of prompt would fit our use case. Freeform, which is open-ended text, structured, which has a predefined format, and often where you provide examples of requests and responses. Or chat, which enables a user to have a natural, ongoing conversation with a language model. I started with the most basic type of prompt in Google AI Studio, a freeform prompt. And I used the Gemini 1.5 Pro model. A freeform prompt is an open-ended instruction or a question you provide to a large language model like Gemini. It has no predefined structure and doesn't require you to give specific examples of requests and responses. The Gemini 1.5 Pro model is multimodal and takes text and images as input and outputs text. To start, I entered what recipe can I make using the items in this photo, along with a photo of some food items that I took. 
And here's the result I got back in Google AI Studio. After a bit more experimentation, I found that for version one of our app, a freeform prompt was perfect. It let us quickly experiment, and it gave us good results for our use case. Next, I focused on tweaking the prompt to get consistently reasonable recommendations. I also instructed Gemini model to provide useful information with the recipe, such as the number of people it will serve and nutritional information per serving. An example of something unexpected that I address was the Gemini model returned a recipe even if the image didn't contain any edible items. So I added a line to the prompt instructing the Gemini model not to return a recipe in the scenario. It's crucial to be mindful of safety considerations when building your app and working with large language models like Gemini. Following Google's safety guidance, we incorporated several safety measures in our prompt. For example, in our case, we instruct the model to only provide recipes that contain real, edible ingredients and to follow food safety practices, like ensuring poultry is fully cooked. I updated the prompt by adding that the Gemini model should list ingredients that are potential allergens. Additionally, there are adjustable safety parameters for the Gemini API, such as for harassment or dangerous content. After reading up on each, I found that the default settings for these safety parameters were suitable for our app. We will continue to test and monitor for safety problems throughout the life cycle of the app. This is the initial prompt I came up with for the app. Now I can save it and share it with Eric using the share feature in Google AI Studio so he can add the prompt to the Flutter app. To start, let me show you the app that we built. When you open the app, the first thing the user sees is the chef, Chef Noodle, asking them which ingredients they want to use in a recipe. They provide this list of ingredients by taking a picture. Then the app has additional inputs that allows them to personalize their recipe request, such as buttons for common ingredients they may have, dietary restrictions, and cuisines they're in the mood for. When the form is filled out, the user presses Submit to request a new recipe from Chef Noodle. Behind the scenes, this form data is being interpolated into the prompt. So in the Flutter app, conceptually, the prompt looks more like this. The inputs from the form are inserted into the text prompt, and the images are attached. The prompt is then sent to the Gemini API, which generates a new recipe and returns it to the app. And that's the main functionality of the app. Now let's go through the steps taken to set up and start making requests to the Gemini API with our prompt. First you need to get an API key for the Gemini API. In Google AI Studio, click Get API Key in the left-hand navigation bar. Let's create the API key in a new project. This automatically creates the API key for you in Google Cloud and restricts the key to only be able to call the Gemini API. Alternatively, you can select an existing Google Cloud project if you already have one that you would like to associate your API key with. Now, you can copy the key to use as you develop your app. If you don't set up billing, you can use the API free of charge up to specified rate limits. Once you're set up with the API key, the next step is to add the Google Generative AI package to your Flutter app. To do so, open your terminal and navigate to the directory of your Flutter project, then add the package with the pub add command. Next, add the code required to set up the Gemini API in a Flutter project. You can find the code needed to do this in the getting started docs at ai.google.dev. The setup code looks like this. I added this code in the init state method of the app's top level widget. This code is creating a new instance of a generative model object, which knows how to communicate with the Gemini API. The constructor for the generative model class expects the name of the Google LLM you're passing in, such as Gemini 1.5 Pro, as well as your API key. Finally, this code attempts to get your Gemini API key using the string from environment method, which is part of the Dart core library. This method expects that an environment variable called API key will be passed in when the app starts running. The simplest way to pass in the API key as an argument is to use the dart define flag when you run the flutter run command. 
and this works great for development. Now that the Gemini API is set up and the app is running, we can focus on adding the logic to the app that will make the request to the Gemini API with the prompt. To start, I looked at the documentation at ai.google.dev and found an example of the code I needed to add to my app. That example code looks like this. The most important part of this code is the generative model generate content method from the Google Generative AI package. The generate content method is where you build the prompt for the Gemini API. It expects a list of content objects, which will be a list of content subtypes, text part, and data part. Text parts are used to pass in strings, and data parts are objects you can use to pass in files, such as images. Let's get back to our prompt, which currently looks like this. But of course, our app has dynamic input from the form, so we need to update the prompt in the app to look more like this. To add this to the Flutter app, I copied the prompt text from AI Studio into a text part object, and then replaced the specifics, like dietary restrictions, with values from the form the user fills out. Now, back on the main page of the app, when a user presses Submit Prompts, the app will generate a recipe that can be saved. Let's see it in action. Great, it all works as expected. But I think we can do more with AI. Namely, I want to give Chef Noodle a more interesting personality. Let's see what happens if we update the prompt by adding, you are a cat chef who travels around the world and your travels inspire recipes. With this update to the prompt, let's hot reload and see what happens. And now, Chef Noodle tells us something interesting with each recipe. Lastly, I want to talk about structuring data when working with the Gemini API. By default, when we started, the Gemini API returned the recipe and all the accompanying data as markdown. In the beginning, this was great, and parsing out a title, a list of ingredients, and a list of instructions was simple. But as our prompt became more complex and we were requesting more information like nutritional information and allergens, it became impossible to parse out the information reliably. But then I realized I was thinking with my pre llm brain. This isn't a problem that I need to solve with code, it's a problem I can solve in the prompt itself. So I added an explicit formatting to the prompt. This mostly worked right away, but occasionally the Gemini API would return different properties as different types. For example, sometimes ingredients would be a list of strings, and sometimes it would just be a long string. To solve this, I added the expected types to the prompt. And since that update, the responses have been in the expected format and I've been able to reliably deserialize the response as JSON without throwing exceptions. And that's the app. Now I have a personal chef in my pocket and I didn't have to build a database of recipes to get it. And at the end of a long day, I don't have to type a list of ingredients into my phone to find a recipe to make. I just snap a picture and Chef Noodle figures it out for me. And of course, this is a Flutter app. So when it's time to start cooking, I can switch to my Pixel tablet so it's easier to follow the recipe hands-free. As a Flutter developer, I like building interesting UIs. I find it fun to focus on the user experience and animations, and I don't find it fun to tinker with server-side logic. It's pretty incredible that using the Gemini API in Flutter, I was able to build an app that has real-world functionality, and I spent almost none of my coding time on building out a server and writing database queries. As a product manager, I like continuously improving the product and experience for users. In the future, I'd like to make Chef Noodle more interactive with chat. I'm looking forward to using the Gemini API's chat feature to build that version of the app. Right now, you can check out this video's description for links to the GitHub repo for this app and some other useful resources. I hope you have seen the potential of building AI-driven apps with the Gemini API. And if you'd like to use the Gemini API in your Flutter or Dart apps, head to the quick start to get started with the Google AI SDK. We can't wait to see what you will build.